November 2020, I set out to do something I have never done before, and that is to quit Facebook. Now, I didn't quit Facebook cold, like cold turkey, personal, everything. No, this decision to quit Facebook or how I quit Facebook was actually about quitting my brand, Tricycle Creative, quit using Facebook for Tricycle Creative. Now, when I announced this, so many of you flocked to this open letter that I wrote about why I was making the decision. And it has been something that so many of my clients, so many of my friends have asked me about. So I decided to kind of chronicle uh, this whole month with a couple of journal entries about how it's going, what I'm learning, and weirdly enough, even what it feels like. So what follows in this episode are uh, journal entries, if you will, on my path of quitting Facebook for Tricycle Creative. I hope you enjoy. You're listening to Tripod, the Tricycle Creative Podcast, produced for anyone interested in being a better digital and content marketer. Host Ross Erosion is a marketing coach, content creator, and entrepreneur who brings you helpful tips, social media updates, inspiring interviews, and his own unique perspective on how to tell your story and grow your business. So sit back, relax, and let's get pedaling. So today is November 1st, and it is 8.45 a.m., the end of daylight saving time, which, if I'm being honest, kind of messed me up because I didn't know that. <clears throat> And I woke up, looked at the clock, started working, looked at the clock an hour later, and it was the same time. And I just read a science fiction book about time loops and uh, time travel. So I was thrown off a little bit by that. But I digress. You're not here to hear about my uh, maybe time traveling exploits. You're here to hear <clears throat> about the No Facebook November. And today is day one. And let me tell you where this kind of came from. This came from the fact that really in the past year, while I post on Facebook and uh, create content for Facebook, my reach, that is the number of people who actually kind of receive the content from Facebook, has been incredibly weak. Now, as a strategist, um, I I would, if I put myself in the shoes of my client, if you will, and they were having the same problem, I'd say, well, you need to start creating uh, potentially more content uh, that's relevant. Maybe relevancy is the issue. Um, And I've been doing that. And yet Facebook, because as I've mentioned before, it's their playground, they set the rules, Before you enter, you have to read the big placard sign outside their playground and, uh, you know, beware all ye who enter. And it just seems like when you are a starting, growing brand or business on Facebook, that Facebook shows you no love. It used to be very different. We all look back to pre-2018 when uh, the algorithm by Facebook's own admittance was incredibly different. Now, it was so different that people were a little bit up in arms about it and that caused Facebook to change the algorithm to prioritize more uh, content from people, the people that you know versus the brands that you follow. But I don't feel like that there's been a equilibrium. I think that uh, brands still very much struggle with brand pages. Now, I will tell you this, the workaround, or not workaround, maybe that's not the right best way to say it. A strategy that many people employ is uh, groups on Facebook. Um, I participate in many groups, things like that. But but I'm going to put that on the shelf for now because I really, really just want to talk about brand pages. When you're a creative entrepreneur 
and you know you want to secure all of these social channels, a uh, brand page on Facebook is kind of one of the boxes that you check. But here's the thing that kept just annoying me or the question that kept uh, sneaking in. Is it worth the time that I'm putting into it? And maybe you've had that same question. I know many clients I work with struggle with that. The time that they put into Facebook. And, and let me say this. Maybe it's even an hour a week. Right? I, I really believe that all time is precious when you are a creative business owner. So that hour a week that you're spending on Facebook, is it more valuable being spent? That's an hour that you could spend uh, creating a podcast, you know, uh, creating an email, doing something else. You know, all behavior, all marketing efforts are not necessarily created equal. And it does depend on your business and it does depend on your audience. But that was the question that just ke- just kept rattling in my brain is, you know, the time that I'm dedicating to Facebook, is it even worth it for my business? And the answer I kept getting was no, that it hasn't been. And that's something I've wrestled with. Hopefully you've read my breakup letter with, uh, or maybe take a break up letter on my website. I'll put it in the show notes. You can read it there. But it just feels like the relationship that some creative entrepreneurs and even myself have with Facebook is, is based upon the, the, the good times, right? We've all been in relationships that, you know, maybe we stayed in for, you know, a month, six months, even a year too long. Because you get these glimpses, these flashes of the good times. And you're and 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 that nostalgia, if you will, keeps you hooked. It keeps you hooked. But at your core, you know this isn't a fit. This isn't it. And just the fact that that exists in your mind, it occupies space. I've talked before about, you know, I, I, I use the phrase a lot like how, you know, the calories that you're spending on this, the energy, if you will, that you spend. You know, as a creative business owner, you only have so many calories. You only have so much energy at which you can give. Before you start to run on fumes. And let's say you have eight hours of energy a day to give, to really give, like to really give a hundred percent of your creative, your leadership, your impactfulness, and an hour of it's being spent on a platform that just isn't doing anything for you. That was the thing that led me to this no Facebook November. So we're going to see what this is like every couple days. I will document where my head is at. Again, today, day one, I'm actually feeling really good. The idea that Facebook now does not even have to occupy space in my brain. Right now, it's like a chemical influx of goodness. And I'm a digital marketer. I love technology. I love social media. But this is where you kind of can mature as a digital marketer. I tell clients all the time, you don't have to be on every platform. So this is one of those experiences, situations where, you know, uh, let me kind of do as I say and do as I do. And let's do this experiment with no Facebook November. It's day four of my no Facebook November, making this November 4th, 2020. I'm recording this early in the morning before our country even knows the outcome of our presidential election. 
You know, and I bring that up because it's it's obviously it's historic and very personal event, but also because it's related to my no Facebook November announcement. When I announced I'd be taking a break from using my business Facebook account for the month of November, I did receive some attaboys from people who were patting me on the back because they believed this to be a political decision. Largely, this came from people who I know would be comfortable with me calling them conservative. Their praise came because, you know, they believed this to be my way of sticking it to the perceived liberal, liberal bias and censorship of social media platforms, and obviously, in this case, Facebook. And as much as I love reaction and response to something I'm doing, I have to say, I'm not doing this for political reasons. I've shared on several episodes of Tripod how I struggle with how Facebook does business. And while my no Facebook November maybe has some connected threads to that, my reasoning is kind of its own ball of yarn. Almost every client I've ever worked with has asked me early on, what social media platforms are the best? The best. And I'll tell you what I tell them. It depends. Yeah, that's right. There is no right or wrong answer. But instead, there are better and best answers that are based on a number of variables, such as your target audience, specifically their age, your product and or services. What are you selling? The resources that you are prepared and able to dedicate to social media. And what platforms are you familiar with? Or do you even enjoy using? This is one that's not thought about enough. And I actually think it's an interesting and healthy starting point to ask, is there a particular platform that you personally are on, enjoy, like using? Because that's a huge part to actually doing it. Is if on some level you know how comfy doing it and if you enjoy it, you're all the more likely to actually do it. And no matter what platform or platforms you decide upon, you need to have measurement protocols in place to inform your efforts. I watch a lot of football, and one thing you always see after a team scores, or makes a mistake, or has a turnover, is the quarterback go to the sideline and work with the coaching staff to scroll through video and screenshots of what happened so they can replicate it, if it's good, or fix it, if it's bad. You are the quarterback for your creative business. You need to be vigilant in evaluating what's working and how to replicate or grow it, and what's not working and how to fix it. When I came to the proverbial sideline in October to look at my Facebook data, I saw a continuation of a trend of minimal ROI, return on investment. You may be wondering what data I was looking at, and I'll happily share that with you. I was looking at post reach. That's how many people Facebook shows my post to. Engagements. That's any sort of click with a post. And the Facebook source traffic to my website. So that's how many people click a link in Facebook that brings them to my website. And despite my continued efforts of tweaking my content strategy, the numbers stayed roughly the same. Now, you've probably heard the quote, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, that could be applied here. My decision for no Facebook November was informed by data and strategy, not by hunches or even politics. And you might even go so far as to say it's a result of the dreaded F word, failure. As a creative business owner, you must learn to accept failure and identify it. 
Because failure is the manure for great new ideas. And it's really only failure if you don't learn from it or fix it. 10 days in and I'm still growing strong with no Facebook November for Tricycle Creative's brand account. I'm still loving it and I've been spending my energy on other content and marketing efforts. In case you missed them, here is a quick rundown. First, the 2020 Rewind miniseries. Yeah, on this very podcast, you've probably seen some new episodes popping up, and they are conversations I'm having with creatives, friends, clients, colleagues, all of the above, to talk about their year, their trials, tribulations, and takeaways that can help you as you navigate the world of entrepreneurship. I've also worked on this thing I'm calling the three-on-three worksheet. So if you're struggling with what content you should create to promote your business, well, I've been working on this simple worksheet that's inspired by my love of basketball. But don't worry, you don't have to be a baller like me to be able to use it. And lastly, falling under the practice what I preach category, guess what? I've been running myself through the Tricycle Creative Roadmap Sessions. That's right, our very own program that I created to help creative business owners build that frame upon which you base your marketing strategy, your campaigns, your content. I'm doing that for Tricycle Creative for 2021. Now, if you want to learn more about the Roadmap Sessions and why you need it, you can go to tricycle-creative.com slash Roadmap Sessions. So yeah, I've been pretty productive. And just to reiterate, it's not necessarily that I was spending hours every day or week on Facebook, although sometimes I was. It's that it consumed space in my head and required my attention, like a constant distraction. And when you're a creative business owner and you have a distraction that's not beneficial, you need to get rid of it. It's day 18 of No Facebook November, and oh man, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And on a related note, I am working on a new Tripod Live show. If you don't know what that is, that's the like live stream video version of Tripod. And the show I'm working on, my co-host Hillary and I will be sharing the marketing tools that we are thankful for. Now, by the time this episode is published, that video will definitely be on the Tricycle Creative YouTube channel, and I will drop a link to it in the show description and in the show notes at tripodpodcast.com. So let me ask you, what marketing tactics, tools, or strategies are you thankful for? Maybe you really love the visual nature of Instagram. Perhaps you like the direct path to someone's inbox that your email newsletter provides. Or like me, maybe you love the ability to share your thoughts and showcase your expertise that comes with creating a podcast. Or maybe you're just thankful for the person who consistently supports you. And maybe they even send you referrals here or there. Whatever it may be, think about what aspects of your marketing you're thankful for. And do more of that. Trim a little time. Allocate a little more energy to the things that you just, you don't dread. And ideally, that you like doing. And if you're sitting there thinking, I can't think of one marketing strategy, tool, tactic that I'm thankful for. Perhaps it's time that you prioritized creating an actual plan. Now, of course, I could toot our own horn, which I guess I'm here, why not? The roadmap sessions, the tricycle creative roadmap sessions are a perfect tool to do that. But that's all I'm going to say on that topic. Go check it out at tricycle-creative.com. Okay, now now that's all I'm going to say. I wasn't particularly thankful for my Facebook brand page. And that's what led me to prioritize other efforts this month. Maybe you need to do something similar. Day 30 of No Facebook November, and that means it's the last day. So what exactly are the takeaways from this experiment? 
The first and maybe most important takeaway is that this decision was made strategically and informed by data. Now that doesn't mean there wasn't an emotional component to it, but interestingly enough, I didn't really realize the emotional impact until I was already doing it. As a creative business owner, I totally get the appeal and completely understand listening to your gut. Listening to my gut is what got me thinking, is the time I'm giving to Facebook actually worth it? So let your gut ask the questions and then call in your head from the bullpen to see if the decision actually makes sense. The second takeaway, Facebook uses calories. What do I mean by that? No matter how much or how little work you're putting into it, it consumes some amount of energy. To put it another way, in the book Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen, he says, your mind will keep working on anything that's still in an undecided state. But there's a limit to how much unresolved stuff it can contain before it blows a fuse. So if posting to Facebook is bouncing around in your head, it's consuming your energy, creating doubt and obligation, you can cut those calories. The final takeaway, fill the time with something worthwhile. Now when I say worthwhile, I'm leaving it up to interpretation. Let me give a brief rundown of how I filled my Facebook time in November. First, I worked on my annual goals for Tricycle Creative. And if you happen to be struggling with this, consider reading the book, Measure What Matters. Absolutely love it, and I love OKRs. Second, I recorded a bunch of new podcasts. Hopefully you've listened to them. They are the 2020 Rewind miniseries. If you haven't, please go and give them a listen. They are awesome. Third, I started working on some new services and programs that I'll be launching for Tricycle Creative. Now, they aren't ready quite yet, but I made significant headway on them, and you'll know when they are. Fourth, I spent more time creating on Instagram. Frankly, it's a platform that's more aligned with creative business owners anyways, and it's yielding a good return on investment for my time. And fifth, I updated some parts of the Tricycle Creative Roadmap Sessions program. If you don't know what that is, well, it's the most comprehensive marketing plan program for creative business owners. And it's something I built completely from scratch. Really kind of my baby when I look at it for Tricycle Creative. I'm a big fan of strategic quitting. And if you wanna learn more about what strategic quitting is all about, you should probably check out my book report that I did on Seth Godin's book, The Dip. To make it easy for you, I'll put the link in the show notes at tripodpodcast.com. When it's all said and done, my no Facebook November was about quitting something that wasn't working for my business. And so many of you listening to this were curious about this decision. Some even asked, how can a digital marketer not use Facebook? And I challenge you to instead ask, why should a digital marketer use Facebook? If you're unclear of the answer to that question, perhaps it's time that you considered giving Facebook a break. And if that's something you're not sure how to tackle, book a consultation with me on the Tricycle Creative website. I'll gladly help you navigate through it. So until next time, I encourage you to keep pedaling. Thanks for listening to Tripod. Be sure to subscribe and rate the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. Show notes can be found at tripodpodcast.com. Connect with Tricycle Creative on social media at Hello Tricycle and learn more about how we can help you with your marketing at tricycle-creative.com.